I, I'd like to show you today a few of the knots that I use. The first knot is the Grinner knot, some call it the Uni knot. Uh, for demonstration purposes I'm using a lure, easier to see, and this is 80 pound line. So all we do to start off with is we pass the line through the eye of the hook, or the, in this case the lure. Pull yourself enough line, I'd say about five inches off, lay it parallel, holding it in your finger and thumb with your main line. Double it back over, pinch between your finger and your thumb, and you'll see you've created a loop which runs above and parallel to your main line. All you do then, depending on the strength of your line, is wrap through the loop and around the bottom of the main line as many times as you require. The thinner the line, the more wraps you will need. Thicker lines such as this, three to four wraps is probably enough. I think I've done five, that's probably too many. Then you just want to pull on the tag end while holding still. Of course, before it really cinches up, put a bit of uh, lubricant on there in the way of spit or water. And then gently pull down until the knot snitches down to either the hook of the eye or in this case the lure. Tease the coils with your fingertips to get them to sit nightly, nicely and then pull tight. At this point I would normally pull tight with my teeth on the tag end but it, as you can see that's snitched down quite nicely there. You've got your wraps. That knot I use for all my wrasse fishing, uh, tying hooks on for soft plastics, I would use for tying uh, big hooks on if I'm using pulley rigs or anything like that. So larger sizes of hooks, S very small freshwater hooks, I don't use the Grinner knot on. It's a different knot, I will show you that another day. But that there is your Grinner knot, or some people call it Uni knot. You can do back to back Grinner knots uh, to join braid to uh, your leather. Uh, I will show you one of those so here I have some 20 pound braid and 15 pound fluorocarbon and I want to join this will be my letter and this will be my main line I want to join the two together so cross the two over put one across the other it doesn't matter which way you do hold with your thumb pull a reasonable length out of each now I normally start with a mono and what I do fluorocarbon in this case is you're doing your same grinner knot so make your loop in this case you're laying it parallel to your your braid and then you're gonna wrap around five times this is 15 pound fluorocarbon I think I've done five there and then you're gonna pull until it's almost perfectly tight and snitch it with your fingertips At this point you're gonna leave that and I normally flip them around like this just because I'm right handed and it's easier for me. And what I do then is exactly the same but with the braid. So I form a loop with the braid that is parallel with the fluorocarbon in this case. Now there's, here's the clever bit because the braid is thinner and slips easier so instead of five turns I put about eight turns in it. I can keep count or as many as I feel I need. Experiment when you're learning to tie it and um, you'll find out yourselves with the different breaking strains of line and braid how many you need and you just pull this tight like you did before with your fluorocarbon. So now we have, if you can see that, two knots. At this point you grab your main line of both and pull slowly and steadily together they should butt up against each other when they butt up against each other then it's a case of going and putting each each a good tug do the same with your tag ends which I do with my teeth and when you've done that that's your knot secured all you have to do then is snip off your tag ends now, if you've pulled these down really tight you should be able to snap uh, snip that off reasonably close without fear of having any slippage any sort of problem I haven't got the sharpest of scissors but look at it there we go 
So there you're left with a good strong, you know, I can't pull that apart, a good strong knot. Uh, it's not my ideal knot for tying letters on, but if you're not very proficient with an FG knot, and as long as you keep the length of your letter so that your knot is outside the rod rings, this will get you fishing and it will still enable you to fish for a wrasse effectively. It is not as good as an FG knot, but it, a lot of people use this knot for convenience. It's easier for people to tie on the bank whilst they're learning an FG knot. Hope that helped. I use the Rapala knot when I don't have links or don't want to use links to attach lures to my line. If I'm using a surface bait, that's when I would use this knot as I feel the link, the link makes the lure or the head of the lure uh, heavy and can sink your line which is not what you want when you're surface fishing you want your lure to be floating don't you and your line as much as possible in fact a tip there i'd use monofilament rather than fluorocarbon you can use fluorocarbon it works reasonably well but ideally monofilament so if we start you'll need to give yourself about six inches or so of line and tie a knot in it what i would refer to as a granny knot. Pull that down but not too far. What you're going to do next is thread your lure on. Once you've threaded your lure on, pull the knot down so that you have a down facing side and an up facing side of it. Pass the knot, the line, your tag end back through the knot. Pull down slightly pull your tag in and you want to be leaving a loop here and not pulling this knot down too tight and then all that remains to do is wrap this tag end around three times or four times if it's fine line this is 80 pound just for demonstration purposes and then you're passing your line your tag end back through the middle of the knot you've created now this is the contentious bit do you tuck it back through here or do you not? If you tuck it back through here, obviously there's less chance of it slipping, but your tag end will be facing out and up, or up rather, and I find that catches more weed. Well, I, like other people, have found that we don't really need that. Not for what I'm doing in British waters, the fish that I'm fishing for. So I tend to leave that like that. So at this point, you need to wet everything down and you need to pull your line, your knot down, snitch it down, pull it tight so it forms a loop on itself and then I obviously get some pliers on my teeth in this case and pull it really tight. So what you're left with there now is your tag end facing downwards so let's play around with that and all you have to do then is snip the line never snip too tight with any knot uh, that's probably I'll go a little bit closer but there we are nice and neat and what you've got there now is you have a loop so you have more movement for the lure particularly when you're trying to walk the dog when you're surface fishing or even just winding a normal lure and you've, you've given your lure a little bit more movement than you get in a clip you do get some movement in a clip but this is this is not and you pull that down there it's not a slip loop knot it creates a fixed loop knot so if you just remember that uh, the thicker lines three twists around the line the main line for thinner lines four you can't go wrong and you got yourself a good little another way of attaching a lure other than a clip so the final knot that I use a lot so these knots will cover pretty much all situations I fish in or you may come across is for small hooks fine lines I use a blood knot now a blood knot is a very simple knot a lot of you probably already know it pass I'm using a lure as a demonstration here but this is for very small hooks and swivels pass the line through the eye get yourself a decent tag end wrap it around 
the main line about six times pull it back and you see you've got this loop that you've created pass that tag end back through that loop but at this point you have a choice this is what we call a half well a blood knot you can do a tucked blood knot and that would involve tucking it back through the loop that you've created between your twists and the line to the lure at this point all the usual bit of lubrication especially with fine lines you want to just tease it down tease the coils down and I find as always using my teeth put this bit between my teeth and pull everything tight which I will do now Ta -da. then you're left with a beautifully coiled blood knot all the uh, the rings sat nicely together Your tag end out here all that remains to do then trim your tag end as I said don't go too tight or anything because slippage can occur and you'll see it's a very strong line even in this 80 pound line that would really take some fish to pull that through so that is the tucked blood knot so having now shown you the blood knot when I'm tying very fine lines so maybe when I'm freshwater fishing coarse fishing maybe fishing for mullet where I'm using fine lines of four or six pound I might get a breakage and I haven't got any spare line to respool my line or I don't want to respool the my, my line I can tie the line back together with a blood knot a full blood knot they call this so the same with the uni to uni or grinner to grinner whatever you want to call it cross the lines over usually start with the top bit and if you can see I'm pinching these two pieces although I'll cross them over apart and I'm going to wrap around the braid in this case so I'm, but I would only be using this with uh, mono six times there or thereabouts and then passing the tag end back through by my finger and thumb the loop I've created there then I've got to hold that with the other hand the finger and thumb the other hand and do the same with the other piece of line for demonstration purposes now you don't want to make these loops too tight at this point I'm using braid so when you come back over again for the last time you've then got to pass it through the loop between your finger and thumb that you've created <clears throat> and at this point you want to moisten either side and then I bite these two tack ends between my teeth obviously if I'm biting and pull on the main lines of both slowly and steadily so that it beds down so I'll do that now and then I'll show you the finished knot so hopefully you can see that if I get the camera working so I can see it, it might help and there you go you've got your braid in this case tightened right down you've got your mono for a goblin in this case tightened right down I wouldn't advise this for tying your letters on use your uni to uni it's a little bit stronger than a, a full blood it's for tying main lines together so all that remains then is to hold these two bits here and as we always do cut the tag ends and you'll see then you're left with a nice strong knot and you could carry on fishing it's not as strong as a line that hasn't snapped but it might get you out of trouble sometimes and allow you to carry on fishing hope that helps so as always please like and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell and drop a post in the comments let us know where you got on or your thoughts on it maybe you use different knots to me something i don't know i'm always willing to learn cheers now the constant angler